Hello people, and welcome back to part 7 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And thank you so much indeed for all the support uh, last week when we started to play with the idea of public transport parks and how we can make park life areas a little bit more interesting. However, you guys had some great suggestions and pointed out, is this really public transport integration if they can't actually get into the park area uh, from the public transport line? And I totally agree. So let's fix that. We're going to delete a little bit of fencing and then bring out a pathway. Of course, this does break uh, the ability where people have to pay to enter the park life area, but it's not a major park life cheese. So a little pathway here. This will allow people to get back into from that tram line a little easier, as these old guys already are. So thank you for all suggestions and indeed all the support. However, in today's episode, we are going to introduce the Industries DLC and build a level five forestry area, work with some unique factories and talk about how we can make the Industries DLC a little more aesthetically pleasing as well. So let's make forestry look good, shall we? So the first thing to do when you're building any sort of industry area with the DLC is to identify a place where that resource is present. This can be done by coming into info views and then hitting this natural resources heat map here. This will now break the map down into four separate resources, uh, oil being the darker black spots, ore being the lighter blue, forestry being green, and fertile land being kind of a lime green. Forestry is the only one that can be placed where the resource isn't naturally appearing on the map, so you can place your own trees and the forestry will extract the resource from them, but nine times out of ten, it's easier to place them where there already are trees, it saves you placing your own. So once you've identified your chosen resource, again, kind of today's information will apply to all of the areas, it's just that the natural resource itself will be different. The same thing applies with main buildings, processors, and extractors. So the first thing we want to do is come into our districts tool and paint out a regular industrial area. These cannot overlap with campus or park areas, and you'll notice what happens when they do. So you see how I've painted my industrial area over a park area here? The park gate is now no longer registering as inside a park, so we need to fix that just by dragging that district back over it. So if you do encounter that issue, that is why. Okay, so I'm going to come into my roads now, and I'm going to grab myself a small industry road. And let's come on to road length, and angle, and grid snapping. And we'll come out by 20 units, okay? This is going to give us a nice introduction. Maybe even make it 30, okay? So I'm going to grab a little one-way road. I'm going to come out by 10 on each side. So one-way systems are very important with Industries DLC, and they will keep traffic flowing nice and smooth. Now that we've created our industry area, we can come into industries and then come over to this new tab here, which is forestry. Likewise, if you're working with farming or, or oil, then those respective tabs are next to this one. But we're playing with forestry today, so we want a forestry main building. And then once you have your industrial area painted out, we'll of course adjust the size as we go on today. Now let's go ahead and place our forestry main building down here, which is going to give us a forestry area. Okay, this is going to be fine. So once you've placed in your main building, we can have a little chat about this little info panel that then pops up for an industrial area. So we start by extracting raw forestry product. This product is either then exported, or we can turn it into two other types of resource. For farming, this is paper and plain timber. And again, we can either export these two new resources, or we can send them to a unique factory to be turned into goods, which makes us a lot more money. But we'll get there today. So now that we've placed the main building, the next thing we want to put down are some resource extraction buildings. So I'm going to bring my one-way system to box in the main building. That's going to be a nice time there, okay? And then let's draw out by 20 units either side and start creating some frames. So I want to get down some small tree plantations. But I want to bring these out on a dirt road, so... Again, it's a little more appropriate into the forestry theme. I'm also going to bring it parallel and create a little bit of a frontage network around the entrances to the industrial area. We'll do the same thing over here again as well. We can recheck our distances. We can go for 100. And then we can bring everyone down. Again, if you want it to be parallel, you can do. Let's do 460. Everyone's preferences here for symmetry will be slightly different. And that's going to be two frames. And let's come in and start placing some small tree plantations now. So these just have to be placed on top of trees. You can see the game is highlighting trees for you. As long as it's on top of some sort of tree, you will be okay. So I'm going to place these four small tree plantations facing into the main forestry building, okay? This is going to start to create a little bit of an entrance into the area for us. 
So you can click on these small plantations and change their appearance into a different type of tree if you want. Uh, I'm in a tropical themed map, so I'm going to stick with conifers, I think. Of course, give these guys power and water, as is needed with everything else in City Skylines. So this is the very kind of base foundation of an industrial area, okay? Right now we can produce uh, raw forestry products, which are going to be produced by our small tree plantations. This bar will slowly fill up, and currently the industrial area cannot process them into paper or plain timber because we don't have those buildings placed. So the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to start exporting raw forestry product uh, in the city. However, I do want this natural resource to be processed into paper or plain timber so we can uh, eventually send them to our unique factory. So then I'm going to bring down another holding road here to sit parallel with my highway because I think this is going to be a nice spot uh, for perhaps a couple of sawmills to sit up against. And again, I can see that my industrial area wants expanding again now, so just paint it out. You can always go back and trim it off once you know kind of the final configuration of your build. So here we go. A couple of sawmills. So these guys, they don't need to be placed on trees, okay? These are processing buildings now, not extraction. So these don't have to be on a natural resource. Why don't we place down two sawmills, okay? And this is going to turn raw forestry product into plain timber. So a very simple and easy flow chart just to follow as these trucks come and drop resources off. You will notice that they're not enough resource warning goes away. They receive a delivery of raw forestry product. Likewise, if this is a farm, it will be raw farming product. If it's an oil refinery, it will be raw oil product. And then they will turn it into one of two resources. There's also something here called a small log yard, which is a building we can use to store raw forestry product to help keep these two topped up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place in a small log yard just next to my two sawmills. And this is going to slowly fill up now. So every time that these two processing buildings need the raw forestry product rather than it having to be exported from over here or elsewhere in the forestry areas we come to build it today it can just store up here and continually feed these two processing buildings here so small log yards are very helpful indeed uh, for your forestry areas do place a few of them around especially near your processing buildings okay you'll notice here now they're going to start dropping the product off here and it will actually visually fill up as well which is always nice Likewise with our park areas, we also have criteria to meet to move up to the next level. Uh, we have to have uh, resources produced, we only have 80 at the minute, and we have to have 150 spaces uh, for workers to come and enjoy. And each of these sites provides workers. This gives 20 workplaces, this one gives 46, and so on. And as you unlock new buildings, they will hold uh, more and more workers, of course. So, let's go ahead and start placing down some more extraction buildings, shall we? Let's redraw this length here so we can mimic the plantations. So we'll come out for 460. Here we go. That seems like it's going to be a little bit better. And then we can place in another area over here. Just making sure we continually bring out our forestry area. So we do have the workspace for 252 workers. and We need 150 for it to hit that next level. So very much like last episode when we were playing with Part Life. Just leave your game running and continue to design and expand and your area will naturally move through its levels. Whilst that is happening, let's talk about some initial decoration for the forestry area. So what I also want you to do alongside painting out an industrial area is to come over with a regular district and paint this over your forestry area, okay? Because we're also going to be using the vanilla forestry assets here for decoration alongside satisfying a little bit of industrial demand as well, okay? So, paint that area over, and then you're going to come into your industrial specialization. So, this is the vanilla industry stuff, but it's still useful here. And we're going to give it the forestry specialization. Likewise, if you're building a farm here today, then give this a farm specialization. And then what this allows us to do is to come into the area and zone up little bits of generic industry. But because it's been specialized as forestry, it's going to fit into the theme of our forestry area, and it's also not going to be a generic pollutive industry like we have over at the start of the city here. So as this comes in, you'll see how it works. So we have one of these grow. I don't like this one. <laughs> it is literally just a patch of trees. Just continue to trim them back until we get some of the ones that we like. Yeah, so let's discuss some decoration palettes. We now have access to all the fencing because we've introduced part life and industries. Uh, so we can now start looking at some forestry fencing, uh, which is one of my favorite ones. So let's snap into our grid and we're going to bring this uh, parallel with the main road that comes in and also bring down some forestry fencing to start running parallel with the main road. And again, decoration palettes, everything that you're fond of here will be more than welcome. Get in some of your favorite content creator palms if you like. 
Start bringing in some repeated tree patterns that flanks the entrance into the forestry. Okay, that's a slightly more impressive and noticeable entrance into an industrial area now, isn't it? Given a single entry road, some fencing and some repeated tree patterns, it certainly makes a world of difference into a forestry area. So we do have some more spaces here, but I am waiting for a particular asset to place in these spaces because I know how it looks from a aesthetic point of view. So we will just let our forestry area run now. We do have the spaces for workers. We just need to actually employ those workers. And your industrial area will satisfy this orange industrial demand down in the bottom here as well. Um, it will bring this bar down. So let's just leave the game to run for a little bit. We'll create some resources, produce some plain timber, and then wait until we hit level two uh, so we can start to place in some more forestry assets. And wonderful. This is going to take us up to our next level where we unlock the biomass pellet plant, the furniture factory, some sawdust storage, the forestry workers' barracks, and a small tree sapling field. So that's going to give us two stars. And we can also see one of the uh, vanilla forestry buildings coming in now as well. So again, kind of fits into the forestry vibe, right? And it definitely helps from a decoration perspective as you look at the two kind of styles together. But either way, let's place in some small tree plantations now. So I'm going to treat this to run directly in front or behind of our palms here. I'm also going to start removing some of the trees that are not part of my design. Okay, and again, you can change these into a little greenhouse. So you can imagine here the Forestry Commission that manages this site. They plant their saplings in the kind of front, smaller greenhouse fields before they're moved into a proper sort of plantation where they're left to mature and then eventually harvested. So consider these sorts of things for your industrial area, okay? And lining them up like this in very parallel sort of symmetrical patterns is going to help decorate the area as well. And this is a vibe that we want to repeat over on this side. So we do eventually unlock medium and large uh, variations of these tree plantations and small tree plantations as well. Okay, again, I'm going to remove some of the trees that are not part of my design. And that were just here when we started to build. And again, there's plenty of opportunity now for uh, detailing with some fencing, some pathways. Now you can pretend these might be little access points into the back of the greenhouses for the workers. And then start running uh, with some nicer stretches of forestry fence in this area as well. No row length can be helpful. Okay, you know what? What a difference that makes. Just by running with very set patterns with your main assets. A little bit of pathway work and some fencing. Uh, we can start to create a much more aesthetically appealing forestry area. Very nice indeed. Okay, so we also unlocked a new building, which is the biomass pellet plant, and this is going to allow us to make paper. This, however, is a polluted building. You can see it has uh, noise and ground pollution. So you want to make sure that this isn't anywhere near uh, residential. Or any sort of water source either. So it looks as though I'm going to start configuring uh, the vast majority of my processing buildings on the right side of the forestry area here to sit against the highway, because again, it's going to help me decorate. And I can also see now that I might want the highway to carry on extending as the highway for a little bit before it merges into a six lane. So I'm going to come down the road length and just bring this down there for right now. Of course, whatever lies down here can be hooked into the highway. And we can also hook it into the forestry area as well if we wanted to. We'll see what happens. So I'll grab myself a little one-way small industrial road and create some little smaller access roundabouts into the forestry area here. That's going to come down like that. We will get a nice smooth connection with 270. Wonderful. Let's come out by 120. And then we're going to make a little roundabout here. Let's go for a nice five deep one. Again, stick into those second blue markers. We're going to keep everyone parallel. We'll have a little roundabout here. And then feed this into our network. And I'm thinking feeling of placing the biomass pellet plant at somewhere within this space here. Okay, but definitely not on the access road. Uh, that comes into the highway for the industrial area. So let's come out with uh, perhaps another industrial road, okay? And we can start to match up with uh, the rest of our frame now and provide more interconnectivity. And then let's have a little chat about what we can do, again, with some sort of dirt frontage networks that are going to allow us to place uh, these larger, more important-looking assets uh, with a little more thought in mind. 
So let's come ahead and grab that biomass pallet plant again. Exactly the same process with the sawmills. He is now going to receive uh, raw forestry product and turn it into paper. So we are now producing plain timber and paper. When we come over to our forestry area, we can see that we're making at least plain timber for right now. Of course, we've already just placed the paper plant, so it's not quite got anything yet. But what we can now do is come back into the industries tab and have a look at the unique factory. And the first one you unlock for hitting a level two forestry area is the furniture factory. Likewise, if you're playing with a farming area, you will have the bakery. If you're playing with the oil area, you'll have a household plastics. And the level two ore area will get an industrial steel plant. So let's go for a furniture factory. So this guy is going to want paper and, and you can even hover over it as well. It tells you exactly what it needs. It wants paper and plain timber to turn it into a diamond, but the diamond just means goods. And that can be that sold or exported out of the city for money. Okay, and again, this is another processing building. So I'm going to want to factor its position uh, into the area a little bit more thoughtfully. You know, this is a big important asset. Let's see where we want this to sit. How about we create maybe, again, another little frontage network that can run parallel with our highway. And you can start to see how this is going to kind of work and complement each other. Now you're getting all this kind of stacked road network infrastructure that's really helping decorate the city as well. And then we can come in and place this. So again, asset orientation is always massively important with a factory, as with everything else in the game. And I definitely want it facing the other way. So we're going to draw out a network on this side. We can then relocate the building to the other side, which is going to put kind of the branding and the front of the factory out facing the highway, which is something I always do with the, the Wood Vision Furniture Factory. Fans of Palavan will recognize this orientation. I hope you can agree, right? much nicer. We can even start turning this into uh, one-way uh, contraflow systems if we like. Let's come in with a one-way loop, create this one too. And then let's bring this back into this road over here. We could bring it back into this point and then just have it flow that way, but this junction's a little short. We'll leave both in and just see how it performs. So now to keep the factory stocked, we actually don't want to be placing uh, the industry storage. We want to come into a warehouse and there are four different sizes here. They're kind of a small, medium, large and regular, you know, each getting increasingly larger in size and of course, thus holding more resources. So I'm going to place down two warehouses. Again, any size is fine. It's really up to you. You only need smalls for just one factory. This will be okay. And then we're going to tell this to store both of the resources that the factory needs, which in this case is plain timber. So we will say, yep, this one can store plain timber and this one can store paper. The factory now has two warehouses directly behind it that are holding both of the resources that it needs. And the trucks can now just continually flow through the one way system to feed the unique factory with what it wants. Likewise, power is going to be important here if we want people to remain connected. So just give some temporary power connections. Just that wherever you can get them in, of course, come the end of the build, you can trim it all back. But that's gonna keep our unique factory start to game. So it's just waiting on a little bit of paper now, which will start coming in from here. Uh, we did unlock a higher capacity storage unit as well, which is the sawdust storage, uh, which can be placed next to our biomass plant here now, I think. Again, it's gonna be a Style of storage that complements the asset well. You know, it's a lot more industrial looking than the regular log yard is now, which is starting to fill up with some logs. Okay. Very nice indeed. We are slowly ticking through the industry area today. And we also unlocked the forestry workers barracks. So what does this building actually do? So this will increase the work efficiency of the workers in the industry area. Each building increases that efficiency by 5% up to a maximum of 100 so this is essentially just a little building where forestry workers can live on site and the effect that that has on your forestry area is that the workers will be more efficient. You know, these are going to produce quicker. Resources are going to get to your sawmills quicker. I've never really noticed a massive level of improvement with that 5%, but the assets are nice, so I'll still sort of place them anyway, <laughs> if that makes sense. So let's come in. Let's place in two of them. Uh, we will go for... Two over here. Okay, but again, positioning and orientation is everything. Let's bring out this arterial road on a little five curve now. So this can now kind of flank around the side 
of the forestry area. And then I'm going to bring in uh, some holding frames. And why don't I use a nicer road here? You know, this is kind of basically a residential area uh, for the workers. So let's give them some tarmac and grass roads. Again, I'm going to develop lots of frontage networks here uh, to hold these worker assets against the arterial road, which is going to help me decorate the forestry area alongside providing what is now a 10% efficiency buff to the area because I have two workers barracks, each providing 5%. But otherwise, that is it for everything we need. Let's come back and check the area so we can see that we have the space for 542 workers. We need 350 for the next level. And we also need to produce 1,500 resources for the next level as well. So, as always, let's leave the game on 3-speed. Admire your build. Refine it a little bit if you want. Start trimming off some trees and planning in some detail and ideas. But I will be right back at level 3. I would also like to point this out as well whilst it's happening. You will notice that when you place a raw product storage building, you will get a little bit of a traffic influx. This is only going to be a temporary traffic kind of spike whilst the storage unit fills up. So don't worry about these. They do dissipate. It's just because it's new and everyone's trying to rush the store products here. They do eventually fade away. And here we have level three, which isn't a massively impressive level. We do unlock a new factory, the printing press a medium tree plantation, and a large log yard. But first of all, let's take a look at that unique factory. Let's come over to the printing press. So we can see that this wants paper and another resource which we haven't seen yet. Those three little white dots in the top left of the pop-up is actually plastics. That is produced by the oil industrial area. So some factories will require a combination of multiple different raw resources from different types of industrial area. If you don't want to produce the resources yourself, you can still import them from outside the city. You will, however, need to set up a warehouse that stores that product exactly like we did over here. You can place the printing press if you like, but I'm not going to exclude it today. But if you do, just make sure you put a warehouse next to it that is going to store plastics. Or go and make your own ore area and make your own plastics, whatever you want to do. Okay, so we also unlocked uh, some new larger areas now, including, but not limited to, a medium tree plantation. We will eventually also get access to a large as well. And then we also got the large log yard, which again is nearly double the capacity of the small log yard. So not too many interesting things that happens at level three. But you can now switch out some of these for a medium if you like, so I can maybe reduce these. Come ahead and place in a medium tree plantation. That looks like I can squeeze it in perfectly there. So you see now, it's just going to function as one unit, but it's the same size as two smalls. It's also going to draw less traffic as well, because you know there's not three assets here anymore, there's only two, so there's going to be less traffic drawn. It's something worth factoring in to switch out your small plantations out for medium and large once you unlock them, if you want to. Okay, very nice indeed. So let's carry on expanding the industrial area. Now we do still have a little bit of industrial demand in the city, and we do have the workspaces required uh, to hit level four. And of course the resources will just tick away over time. So let's start playing with a little bit of generic industry, shall we, and seeing what we can do to make this look a little more detailed. So these are the assets that we're coming in with here. Let's also trim off our trees that aren't part of our design. So I'm going to zone up several different sizes of regular generic industry here. I'm going to come into some dirt pathways and start mapping out some places where our dirt path can flow. Once these grow, you know, a little bit of new content created grasses and indeed any other kind of favourite little detailing palettes that you're coming across as you're playing the game. This is the perfect chance to start working them in. Okay, so we see we're getting another sort of forestry asset here. And like a little building. And it also has some planks, some kind of like cut timber out the back, which is helping to detail my little log yard here, you know? So definitely don't be afraid of including some vanilla industry. They definitely have a place within these builds. Likewise for farming, oil and ore as well. It's not just forestry that this works with. Okay, so let's come in and start working with and perhaps another little decorated vanilla detailed area here that can sit behind our forestry or biomass pallet plant. Let's go for a little 4x3. A couple of little 2x2s two perhaps. Should I keep them fairly random? Move out of your usual zoning sizes, you'll really notice a difference. 
Again, there's opportunities now where people can start to walk uh, between the different road networks. Still factory and walkability into your industrial builds. People will still walk around them. Likewise over this point as well. We can get those in. And again, some nicer content creator grasses around the areas where you haven't zoned. It's really going to just help add a little more life and personality into what can become a very repetitive, heavily repeated areas industry sometimes if you're a little bit sort of nonchalant with them. There we go. Let's get some more in there as well. So that little forestry area that is actually a forestry building. <laughs> it's just some bushes. And uh, these guys actually are not in the area. So that's a good point as well. We can... That actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it just has generic industry, especially the plasti mold. Okay, but this is a nicer way of using generic industry if you want to do it like this, but I do want just farming assets in here today. So I'm going to extend my uh, regular vanilla district out to encompass those new zonings. And give them a little delete so they grow back, and then we should be okay. So we can use that to decorate that space there now as well if we want. Uh, so still noticing that the uh, biomass pellet plant is still getting the not enough raw materials. I'm guessing this is because, yeah, we're still waiting for this to fill. Once it does, it will start being brought into here. So we shouldn't have to worry about that for too much longer. That will get cleared up. But otherwise, that's kind of it for level 3. <laughs> There's not too much that goes on. And um, We have the worker capacity, and we just want to wait for the resources to take over. So I will see you all at level 4. And here we are at level 4, where we get the engineered wood plant, uh, some wood chip storage, a forestry maintenance building, and a large tree sapling field. Alongside the soft paper factory as well, which is another unique building, um, which is going to be requiring more resources that you don't currently have, including petroleum and plastics and crops for the soft paper factory. And this thing is a beast as well. This is one of the biggest ones. And um, if we just place it for a quick look. Very impressive industrial asset, but... Not for this sort of vibe. Not over here today. If you want to use it, of course you can. Exactly the same process with uh, the printing press building. Okay, so let's have a look what else we've unlocked now. Uh, so we got the forestry maintenance building. So the maintenance building takes care of the industrial buildings, increasing their utilization rate and reducing wastage. Each maintenance building increases the storage capacity of industrial buildings by 5%. So this is another type of auxiliary building alongside the workers' barracks. It's going to help to buff the area as opposed to produce anything. So we can place in a couple of these if we like. Again, very important looking assets. So let's see if we can't find a place for our forestry maintenance building to come into play. And I'm thinking possibly here if we play our cards right with amending a little bit of our current infrastructure. Yeah, I think I'm feeling a maintenance building here. I'm just going to slightly rework a little bit of the infrastructure that we put in here, but it's still going to fit in. Okay, again, orientation, placements, very important. I think I'm happy with that there. Let's come ahead and uh, reinstate those connections that we've lost. Let's come down and hook everyone in now. Do lose a little bit of what we've placed, but not nothing too major. Okay, again, I want a different building in this space if possible. So definitely happy with one forestry maintenance building there. Uh, let's maybe come in and drop in another one so we get that little 10% buff. And I think, again, possibly in and around the soft paper factory is going to be a good shout. So let's break our system and then hopefully place in another one here and then reconnect everyone in. So don't be afraid of going back to delete initial infrastructure ideas that you put together. Okay, that's going to keep our one-way system consistent. Although we are getting a little bit of... Yeah, this is what happens when you respect the topography too much. <laughs> you do get these little cutaways, but I think I can live with that. It's an industrial area. You can live with a little bit of roughness around the edges. It's kind of the whole vibe and nature, to be fair. And we did also grab uh, the large tree sapling field, of course, which can now be uh, placed in here to replace uh, two of the ones that you had uh, on the side, if you wish. Again, this one does have a slightly different orientation slightly different assets in it as well with the large one so i think i'm going to replace my two uh, frontage small sapling fields with the large again it's less assets make sure that we're sticking with the greenhouse aesthetic 
Okay, so it's a slight break in the pattern now, but it's certainly welcome. It's not destroying what we had. We're also getting some nice new little greenhouse assets appearing in there as well, which is going to help to serve as those sorts of admin vibes. Okay. Again, we're still getting a little... There we go, there's the next delivery. Everyone's slowly filling up now. And it would be helpful if I actually connected in my biomass plant, wouldn't it? I wonder how many people have been screaming for that one. There we go. That should start feeding the biomass pallet plant now. And very nice indeed. Now, what else did we unlock? We also grabbed uh, the engineered uh, wood plant. So this is essentially a higher tier version of the sawmill. It has a higher capacity and it looks a little bit more impressive as well. So if you want, you can keep your sawmills or you can tear them out for engineered wood plants. We'll get a little side-by-side -side comparison here. So, you know, this one at this point is a much more industrial looking asset. So you can mix and match them if you want. I think I'm happy to keep them mixed and matched. I think I'm going to leave an engineered wood plant in there. Although again, some orientation uh, might actually be worth discussing here. So let's move our log yard along. I'm going to budge the sawmill over as well, just a touch. And then I'm going to start reworking at this initial sort of frontage uh, frame and network, if you like. No snapping to grid, just road length and angle here. You know, hopefully we have enough room to place one in this side, which we do. Yeah, just a small change like that, you know. It's just going to face out onto the main road. And as we start to drive down this road now, we're really decorating the right side of the arterial by factoring in all this very specific asset placement, how things are sit, where parallel patterns appear, very clearly marked out entrances, okay? And you can see all these little spikes of industry in the back as well. You know, it's an expansive industry area. You can see it all just popping off across the ridge. So now the next threshold is to essentially more than double the resources produced so far. And also wait for 800 workers, which we are still have industrial demand, but we only have capacity for 721. So we definitely need to start placing down uh, some more workspaces. So now I'm going to start developing uh, some frontage networks for uh, the larger assets to come and sit in. Especially like small, like large tree plantations. Stuff like that. Okay, so keep everyone flowing there. Bring everyone down. Start placing in some assets here now. So we could go for a little mix and match of small tree plantations here. Again, just seeing how they surround the build. Again, we just want one more building now to hit the worker cap. We only have one more asset to unlock as well, which is the port mill, which is probably the best looking industrial asset in the game, I would say. That's of my opinion anyway. Okay, and then maybe one more uh, engineered wood plant over this side. I think I'm going to be mostly happy with that. Definitely want to save some sort of nice industrial design out here for the port mill uh, once we do unlock it, which that should be the criteria met now. Yes, yeah, so we have the capacity for 881 workers. We do need 800. Uh, and then we also need to hit 13,500 resources produced. If you're not meeting the worker demands, chances are you just need to bring in a little more residential population, uh, which you can do with any existing frames uh, that we've prepared in the last and more recent episodes. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of residential zoning in last episode's town where we constructed at uh, the park. Hopefully now with this park in the foreground and forestry in the background, we're seeing the effect that two of the best DLCs in Industries and Park Life can have on the game. You know, you go from pretty generic, kind of crappy industrial areas for most of the time into much more customised and diverse uh, industrial areas, which are, which are great. So Industries DLC, definitely worth picking up. And if you don't have it already, it totally overhauls the Industries mechanic of the game. It's very fun to play with. So whilst we are waiting for level 5 to arrive, I want to discuss um, what could possibly be quite a brave <laughs> implementation of public transport into the area. So we've done public transport on industry areas before. Um, you could totally bring the tram line out here and let the tram line come into the area. Um, but I have a very distinct vision in mind of what I want this area to look like. So a couple of episodes ago, we introduced mass transit into the game, which gives us access to monorail. So I'm going to place in a monorail station, and this is going to be indeed a little bit of a brave experiment, all right? <laughs> so just 
Just bear with me here. So I want my monorail lines, again, which are just these assets here. I realize we haven't played with monorail before, so some people might need it explaining. You know, I'm going to have this come you know, through the industry area at various different sections, but definitely flowing through the sort of middle aisle here is really going to modernize the forestry build. And also keep people moving as well, which would be nice. Okay. And I can see now where the space is for some mono rain to start coming through. And it is going to complement the build as well. This is quite a bold move implementing a very kind of modern um, public transport method into what is usually quite a rough and sort of ready industrial area like a, a forestry commission is. But it's really going to help decorate the area, I think. Okay. So it's first time I'm trying it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we want it again. Okay. And then I'm also going to throw another monorail stop down here as well. Slightly amending the positioning of this road now. And now I've prepared another public transport line that can be expanded and designed as we move into this area of the map in subsequent episodes. So preparing public transport, as always, is a nice thing to do. Let's get a connection over there. That's wonderful. And then we will just get a very temporary, brief monorail line flowing back into. Let's reinstate some of our detailing as well that we lost. Did lose a tree over here. And now, hopefully, these little kind of date palms should uh, hold the monorail uh, quite nicely from a detailing perspective. I think we definitely need to change the color of the line, though the red very much classes. So let's go for maybe a nice little lime, little lime green number, and we'll see what we think. <laughs> this is a little bit of a gamble, admittedly, but it's always nice to try new things, right? It's a vibe, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely a vibe. Certainly something I can get on board with, I think. Okay, so it's a little, it'll be a little bit quiet for right now un until, of course, the monorail line extends out and into this area and eventually we'll bring it across the highway and feed it over here. So it will be an expansive network eventually, but we're just preparing it in today's episode. But otherwise, let's hang around for level 5 and I'll speak to you guys then. And finally, we have hit level 5, which gives us the port mill, another factory, and a large tree plantation. So, let's place in our new assets, and we can have a look at some sort of detail and time lapse. So, the port mills, like I mentioned, essentially second tier or top tier levels of the biomass uh, pellet plant. So, let's come into our forestry area and grab this one. So, we have a port mill. Again, it's a noisy and polluted building, so far away from residential is going to be nice. And again, they're super important looking assets, extremely industrial. And uh, one of my favorite industrial assets in the game, actually. So let's place in maybe two of these and hopefully we can squeeze in. A back to back pattern would be nice. And it just so happens that that is perfect right there. Okay, so we can have two of these again. They're going to mold uh, really nicely together to essentially create what looks like a super factory, right? When you put these two back to back together. You can't really tell that they are actually two separate assets. They do blend quite nicely, so important to bear in mind the asset orientation. Of course, they're going to want water. Let's continue to expand out water over here. Very nearly due another water tower, actually. We'll probably uh, drop one in the roundabout over here. Let's make sure he's hooked into the network as well. Just going to help decorate the roundabout as well. So of course these guys are wanting uh, raw forestry product, so likewise with our other buildings it's going to be uh, nice to supply them with perhaps a large uh, log yard to sit up and next door to help keep them supplied. Again, we're going to respect the one-way system here. Let's keep it flowing on this side. And then we'll bring it down and right up against this road here and then trim off any existing frames. And then we'll also make this loop here one way. So now anyone that's coming from the biomass pellet plant is very much encouraged to kind of come out of the industrial area on this highway exit. So having the little highway exit points here is really going to help alleviate the pressure off of the main junction. Okay. But well, I think that's going to sit as a nice kind of centerpiece of the build, isn't it? It's going to sit nicely from the main entrance. See those smokestacks in the back? Let's have a look what else we unlocked. We did also grab uh, the large tree plantations finally. So again, just a, a large version of what we've been working with so far. 
And I think I'm happy to maybe just include a few more resource extraction buildings as something of a border to sit around this side of the industrial area. That's also downgrading to dirt here as well. And then looks like we can squeeze in one more on this side again as well. But of course, choose your tree. I want to go for some conifers, which is actually palms on a tropical theme map. So guys, that does feel like a good point for a detail in time lapse. We're going to come through these little kind of front plantations here and mimic some of the same ideas that we have. Bring some repeated tree patterns that line uh, the monorail through this area. A lot more vanilla gravel path and content created trees and some vanilla zoning uh, to help fill out little detailed spots like this. Plenty more fencing and of course some more repeated tree designs in around the highway. Uh, just to help today's build settle into the city a little bit more. But let's detail it up and we'll be right back. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help me out. If you'd like to help support my work, there are links down to Instant Gaming and Patreon below. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. I really enjoy building forestry areas and lots of fencing, repeated tree patterns, rocks, overgrowth, vanilla industry, all really important for bringing a lot more life and personality into these areas. And the monorail is even getting a nice bit of use now as well. And of course, that will only get busier as the area around it grows and we continue to add more stations into that line. And the wonderful aesthetic of monorail and forestry combination uh, we can mark down as a new spice discovery from today's episode. But either way, I hope you've managed to learn a little bit about the industry's DLC today and hopefully seeing how different they can look from your uh, typical zoned industry. Do hang around for the actual cinematics and check out this place at night time. The traffic flow is perfect and the detail looks great, especially with all the lights from the kind of larger buildings in around the darker areas where all the tree plantations are. Very nice aesthetic. So do hang around for the cinematics, but otherwise I will shut up and I will leave it there. Thanks thank you all so much for watching and as always, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>